Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our fourth episode uh, of our podcast on diversity and equality. It's me again, Shalini, and with my friends Lupita and Rafael. Hi. And today we have uh, Leo uh, with us. Uh, he's a postdoc student at Reykjavik University. Leo, why don't you give a short introduction of yourself? Yes. Uh, so I come from France. I made, uh, I get most of my studies in France. I graduated from a PhD, which was a joint between Marseille and Brussels. So I know a bit also what happens in Belgium and I've studied for one semester in Canada. So that's about my, my background uh, from what I know. And then now I, jo I joined the team for a postdoc, as you said, uh, since last September. Great. Uh, how did you know about this university? Uh, actually, it's a colleague of mine who uh, is already present on the project that I'm hired on. And she's, she asked whether I would like to join. And yeah, I really like the, the team and the place so I joined. Oh, that's nice. And um, yeah, can I go next? Uh, as a student and young researcher, uh, could you share what's your view on equality in, in your field? Yes. Um, so first, yeah, let me point out that I'm uh, rather on the good side of the barricade for like uh, equality wise, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm a male from like France. So, and yeah, my family is not poor. So yeah, I, my view on equality, it might not be as, I don't know, uh, fed from direct experience as it might be for people from minorities, etc. But yeah, so, uh, in computer science, it's quite obvious that uh, there's a, an over-representation of men, I would say. Uh, I, I don't know from what, when it dates back, but yeah, when I was studying uh, for my bachelor, it was like 40 men and three women in my, uh, in my, uh, my class. And yeah, then it's, it, I would say it's a quarter versus three quarter. Um, and in, in France, the studies are also very Franco-centric, so there are not many people from uh, foreign countries. Um, and yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, it slows down uh, quite a lot the field, this, this lack of diversity. And, um, but at this, yeah, at the same time, I mean, it's, it's not just computer science, it's more generally that uh, in science and in more general, there, there are like a lot of gender and yeah, I would say racial bias uh, that make people go to certain certain field and not to, to some other. But funnily enough, for computer science, at some point it was, I mean, when it was about computations, like before the, the 70s and all, it was, it was much more equally, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, the repartition was much more equal. And I think it's because now computer science is associated a lot with like well-paid job and highly qualified jobs and that corresponds to higher positions in society. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think that partly explains why now it's more of a, uh, yeah. I mean, it reflects basically the, the more general social structure that is biased toward men having uh, power and well, better paid positions than, than women. And I think the same applies for like uh, um, I, racial minorities as well. Also, I have a bit less observations about that. Uh, I'm not sure I don't understand exactly the, the, I mean, your full point in the sense that you said that before by past, uh, so there were, um, I mean, the, the, it was, the disproportion was, um, was more intense, let's say, between men and women to computer science and now, uh, and you said that the situation is increasing and that, of course, that's what you can observe, but you already, that you, already, uh, you, you said also that uh, now, computer science is uh, more, I mean, linked to the idea that it's high, qu high qualification, high, I mean, uh, very well paid jobs. And so, I mean, so isn't it so, ba so basically, I mean, from, I mean, just to summarize quickly, I understood that you're saying that before there were a lot of men and not a lot of women. And now, since, the, since uh, computer science is linked to very, I mean, prestigious jobs, we have more women, I mean, if there is an increasing in number of women. I mean, is it? Uh, that's basically what I understood from what you said. Okay, so I thought I rather said the contrary. So I mean, okay. before the 70s, though, it was 
much more equal the, the proportion of uh, of men and women in, in oh, computer science uh, i mean two uh, two days ago we had jackie in this podcast and she said that uh, by this time I mean, the, this proportion was very more visible i mean they were uh, i mean she was basically the only woman in the when she graduated from computer, to computer science uh, and she said that by this time since the proportion was so um so intense so high then it was not very, very, really a problem. She said that um, for the for for her experience, the problem appear when in the I mean from the basically from two thousand when they were uh, I mean it was almost 40, 40, 60 percent. Then there was a problem in computer science due to this. So what to say the two days before in this uh, so, podcast? So yeah, I I saw this podcast, but I'm talking about before the '70s, and I'm not sure Jackie was already around in computer science yeah, before the '70s. I mean, before like... the '70s, it was. I mean, the world was absolutely different, especially the uh, woman position in the society. Yeah, but I, I have in mind people like Ada Lovelace from like the beginning of the 20th century, or Grace Hopper for like mm -hmm. the, the the '50s and stuff like that. That that's what I mean. That's what I okay. that's what I had in mind. And of course, back then computer science was much different. You also have these movies. I don't remember this movie. I don't remember the title in 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 English, uh, but which is about the the woman that conducted all the computation that allowed humanity to go to the moon. Uh, that's what I have in mind when I say that this uh, back then the, it was much less clear whether computers were made for men or for women. And actually, they are not made for either. But but since then there has been a, a big uh, an increasing disproportion uh, between the. The genders, I think at some point it, it uh, reduced a bit, but then it, uh, then I, do, I, I don't have the statistics of recently in mind, but there is still a big disp disproportion in spite of all the like uh, equal opportunities policies, because I mean, the, the problem is much more general than just the universities. It also, it also reflects the structure of the society, so. You just talk about uh, equal opportunities, so. Um... Uh, I mean, do you think that this disproportion is observed? I mean, is the consequence of uh, an absence of equal opportunity? No, I, 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 I mean, you can see it that way, but I think it's the way. I mean, it starts very early. You know, there are, there have been a lot of studies about the relation men and women have re with regard to math, and already, I mean, from the teachers, already like from like uh, primary or secondary schools, you have a different attitude from math uh, for, for, from teacher teaching math towards a male and, and female student you know they might more say okay you're you're a woman so you're not really made for that and i, I mean here i'm talking about math because this is what is taught before before uh, university but computer science is very close to math and i think this analysis also applies to um, to computer science and so you have a, a, a big weight of like gender produced prejudices that are themselves the a reflection of the economic structure of the society, which is, as I said before, favoring men for power position and women for for other position, and, and so 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 of course you can try to compensate this with equal opportunity policies uh, at the level of university, but then you have not much control on, on what happens before, and this is actually what weights. Uh, I mean, not the most, but at least for it's responsible for a big part. To this uh, disproportion, I think. So, um, okay, so you, basically, you're saying that um, the fact to have equal opportunity at the university uh, doesn't really solve the problem because the problem is before. I mean, just to summarize very quickly. Yes, so it can okay. be part of the solution, uh, yeah. but uh, at least it won't it won't solve all the, all the problems because uh, yeah, it's uh, it, yeah the problem is basically deeper and more general in my opinion. Okay, and so, okay, um, what's your problem? What's the problem? So, and that's a very general question, but yeah, just... No, um, I um, I, if I just intervene here, you know, the yeah. file in the other episode when you're saying that um, it's just because we need 50-50% of ratio of some X and Y gender, uh, we should hire people in that way, or, but it's more better or it's better if we hire people based on IQ, right? So if the person is deserving, that person should get the chance. But what Leo is saying, or if, if I get it right, that if we give that opportunity, like the equal opportunity on the university level, we cannot expect that men and women from all over the world have the same amount of education at the university level. So if we judge 
there on that gate based on like who is the deserving, who is the best IQ. And we are thinking that's equal, that's equal opportunities for everyone. But we have to go deeper because they have they, they are not starting from the same level. So it's, it will be unfair, again, not man, woman, any gender, it will be unfair if we just judge them at the university level that, okay, we are gonna be equal here, but we have to be equal from the very start. So give yeah, but, equal opportunities um, from the very but, beginning. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so once again, the idea is that equal opportunity at the university that's 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 good, but it's not okay. enough. We should have equal opportunity since the beginning. That's basically just to establish the idea. Exactly. Um, um, so, but for my knowledge right now, I mean, especially in the Western countries, all the all the children, I mean, uh, all the kids, I mean, even if they are, I mean, uh, the, all the boys or the girls can go and have the opportunity, opportunity, and even I would say they are enforced to go to school. All of them, so they all have. The education and about mathematics. Uh, so um, I don't like the exact number, but I know that a uh, few years ago, um, in a few years ago, I mean three, five years ago, uh, in France, so at the examination at the end of the high school, uh, the grade, the grades, uh, the mathematical grades for women were, were I mean, a lot better than the um, the average grade for um, uh, for the average grade for mathematics for men. So it doesn't see that if there is a, I mean, if you no. want, uh, I yeah, mean, I it, mean, if it you seems see, to be the opposite. No, if, right, exactly. So you see the problem will be somewhere in between. So if in the high school level, a one gender is getting higher grade, but if you see three years later, they are not utilizing that grade. Yeah. The, the, the result that you are thinking like, okay, maybe that gender, they have more grades, they will pursue their career. And the next level, we will see more people from that gender and that's not happening. And if that's not happening, then maybe the problem is somewhere lies between the high school and that next level, right? Oh, maybe right. it's just because, I mean, if you have freedom to choose, if you have uh, equal opportunity, then you have freedom to choose. And then yeah. you need to accept that maybe everyone is not choosing the same thing. That's completely fine. I mean, people can choose whatever they want to choose. Yeah. It's, it's fine, but I mean, yeah, if that's the case that like people are not choosing, then okay, but is it the case? Like, do we know for sure? That's my question, right? Um, as long, I mean, for here, I mean, um, as long as you have the opportunity to choose, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I assume that if you let the, if you let to someone the, the opportunity to choose whatever whatever he wants to hit, he will basically hit what is good for him. So it, it can be for the test, it can be for the uh, for, for some for healthy reasons, mm -hmm. but he will, he will choose I mean, for, for, for his knowledge, he will choose what is best for him. Mm -hmm. And it's better to let him choose what is best for him from, from his knowledge than to unforce him to take something that seems to be good. I mean, I think that for this guy, this should be good. So we'll unforce him to, 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 to take, to hit this. No, it's not, it's not this way. For me, it's better that, I mean, so as um, as said uh, Frédéric Bastia, the, the, uh, the French author, he said, uh, so, I mean, Let's, I mean, he was saying, it was in a different context, but he was basically saying, let's do, I mean, the government should take care of justice. I will take care of my own goods. So basically, I mean, just let people do what is best for us, what is the better for us, for, for them, sorry, because they know what is the better for them. I mean, better than, better than, I mean, I don't know what's the better for you, so I will not, I will not choose for you. That's basically my, my, my idea. So if you let equality of opportunity and freedom of choice, Maybe you will observe some um, disproportion in some different fields, but it's not because it's unjust. It's not fair. So first, we need, we need to defend what's fair. But it's it's maybe because just people are choosing different things. Yeah, no, no, no I agree. I mean, in Scandinavia, if you see, there are more female nurses than male nurses. If you see engineers, there are more male engineers than female engineers because here everyone has their own yeah like will. They they can choose themselves what is good for them, what is yeah, like, it's not good. I mean, especially, that's not the I mean, case. That's okay. But I'm I'm saying, is it the same case everywhere? So it's uh like, it's like both ways, right? We have mm -hmm. the power to choose. We should have the power to choose what is best for us. But also, all the opportunities should be available to us. Yeah, I'm saying it's like this both roads. Yeah, like, I, I, I definitely I, I should, agree. I should choose from all the available opportunities, but the decision should be mine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. I'm one hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. I'm sorry, Leo, we are just talking about sorry. giving you the opportunity to talk. I'm really sorry.
That's fine. But yeah, if I may add something, yeah. I, I think the, the freedom of choice that you invoke is, is quite of an abstraction because in practice, you have a lot of social determinants. For instance, when you're a woman and you're starting a career in academia, at, my, at some point, you might have children. And then mm -hmm. society in general tends to uh, get it that it's the woman that more takes care of the child and that it's the woman that more sacrifices her career for the, for the man. And all those are social determinants. So of course, at the individual level, you don't observe them uh, directly because then what you see is what uh, is some choice made of free will that you and and you don't know what is the past what are all the social determinants that wait on the person but if you do a bit of sociology oh yeah i forgot to mention that i did a first year of master of sociology and that might uh, explain a bit my position on that but uh, if you do a bit of sociology you observe that there is a very high bias gendered bias for instance in computer science and I think there is nothing to the essence of women that explains this bias. It's just that the society is organized in some way and do social determinants. Even if you don't observe them at the individual level, you, you observe that there are a lot of factors. And I think bearing children is part of them, but it's a, a small part of them uh, that encourages, uh, I mean, that encourages women to take this so-called uh, a choice out of free will in one direction and one and, and not one another and the, the converse goes for men of course i mean uh, uh, men will tend to fa to favor more their, their career and stuff like that so that's also what leads them to this uh, more powerful uh, position and i think also a big factor in this uh, gender I'm, I'm more focused on gender inequality because that's what i, I know better i i, I don't uh, i mean i don't want to make uh, like an informed guesses about what happened regarding to racial prejudices also i think the social determinants are also very heavy there uh, but yeah for women i mean for instance in france and i think in europe it's about the same you have about 20 percent different in salary uh, for the same position and i mean this e economic inequality it also conditions a lot uh, the, posi the possibility that you can take and that you cannot take so that's yeah my, my view on that I have a few remarks about what you said, sort of, um, the, you, 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 the first point was about um, the fact that um, most, I mean, mostly uh, a woman will sacrifice his career uh, for uh, family reasons, let's say, just, I mean, you said children, but also, the, I mean, the men, but basically it's family reason. Uh, uh, and you, uh, and I agree on that. And then you said that it's because of social construction. And then, I mean, I would not exactly agree. And so you said that in our society, we assume that women will take care of the children. Uh, but it's not, I mean, it's not just a social, a cultural construction. It's also a biological reason. I mean, for the first nine months, for the first nine months, the woman is the only one to take care of the kids because, I mean, the men cannot just for this reason. So I think it, all the explanation cannot be only viewing uh, social construction. And then, um, uh, so there is an, an, the other point, the second point, um, is that so from my perspective, and I think you will agree on that. So, I mean, if you want, if we want to, 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 um, to, to figure out what's the reason of this difference between men and women, uh, so we'll basically find two causes for that. So there is the cultural differences. Okay, we agree on that. And there is also some biological differences. I mean, it, I mean, it happens and then it just I mean, it's, it's also obvious. And so my, my, my point is that if you try to minimize one of these two differences, you will increase the other one. And so here, once again, um, so in Scandinavian for the past decades, they have tried as much as possible to reduce these cultural differences. And they did very well. I mean, they did great. And I think now, in, I mean, Scandinavia is uh, half the countries when you have the most of equality in terms of equality of opportunities between men and women. And that's great. I'm happy with that. Uh, but now, at the end, I mean, at the end, we observe these differences between the, I mean, the, the careers between women and women. And so I think that's because even if you try to reduce the cultural differences, you will increase um, the, bio, I mean, the, 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 um, bio, um, the biological differences. And then this result, I mean, it's not something uh, from my mind. I mean, this, this result was discovered uh, between 25, 30 years ago. And that was, ex that was just shocked in the Psychology, uh, psychology field, in fact, because all the researcher was uh, assuming the opposite. They were assuming the opposite, but by experience, um, they observed that it was absolutely the opposite. So, I mean, even with this bias, because you know, when you're looking for something, when you're searching something, 
you I mean, uh, at least in conscious, in you're biased by what you think will be good. But then even with this bias to discover it, and that's not one result by one research, it's, it's several of them by several different researchers. And even we get also this result in 2018, three times in October. So, I mean, this result should to be uh, verified. Uh, and so I had a, a, th a third and last remark, but I don't exactly remember, so I cannot say it. But yeah, that's um, basically what I think is that if you, you can try to reduce as much as possible the cultural differences, but you will still have, uh, have different, different uh, have, you will still observe some differences. But isn't it a bad? Is it a good? Is, is it a good or a bad thing? I mean, for me, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's in fact, I mean, if people are choosing different uh, different career uh, careers. Okay, that's fine. It's so, um, yeah, I don't know how, how much, uh, how long you, you want to linger on this question, so don't hesitate to, to interrupt me. Um, but I'm not sure I get your point regarding biological differences, because if they, if they exist, and uh, I, I don't have an opinion, a definite opinion, that, I mean, of course, women bear children, and that's a biological difference, but the extent of them, I, I don't know. Uh, but even if they exist, uh, those are things that evolve over thousands of years, so I don't know how, how you can uh, increase the biological difference in a time in a timeline that is perceptible oh, to humanity. So not, I don't understand the. Difference. That's not what I. Well, that's what I mean. That's not uh, what I what I wanted to say. So uh, if I said that, I'm sorry. But so the thing is that you observe differences for some cultural reason, and you observe differences due to biological reason. And if you try to reduce one of them, you will increase the others. And so, for example, one of the uh, biological reasons in that we don't exactly know why, uh, but I mean, if you observe uh, kids when they are very young, we observe that men are more interested in things and women, and women are more interested in, in people. So, and then, I mean, there's a lot of differences. It's uh, about aggressiveness. We observe that in average, men are more aggressive than women. That's it. I mean, and so, for example, so they, if you take, um, if you take just uh, randomly one man and one woman, you have 60% of chance that the men will be more aggressive than the women. So there is this differences. And so it, it's basically, so that that's, can be explained by uh, biological differences. But so what I would, what I wanted to say is that if you try to reduce the differences of, uh, due to some uh, cultural reason, you will increase the differences due to some biological reasons. And so that may explain why in Scandinavian country, we have um, 20 to 1 women to men in uh, nursing and 20 to 1 women to men in uh, 20 to 1 men to women in engineering. Because I mean, to be an engineer, you, you need to have a special mind that is absolutely very interested in, in things. That's basically the case in computer science. I mean, we are, we are always um, uh, working, we are not working with uh, people, we are working with, with things. And in nursing, it's the opposite. You're working with people. And so that's, and I would say, from a point of view, that it's a lot more difficult to work with people than to work with things. But that's just my point. If um, uh, I can provide an example as a Latin American woman uh, to, to, to this point, um, uh, I can say, for example, a couple of years ago in Mexico, it was very common that if a, a woman goes to a job interview, one of the questions was, do you have kids? Do you plan to have kids? Mm -hmm. And your response um, in some way could bias the decision of the employer uh, to give you uh, the, the, the job. On the contrary, if a man goes to the same job interview, they don't receive that question. The fact of having or not having kids or, or wishing to have kids doesn't affect the opportunity of the men to access to those jobs. Of course, there's part, as you said, uh, um, a biological part, of course, women are who, who take care of the kids in the early months. But once the kids are there, the kids have uh, two parents. And after that, both parents should have the same opportunities, even though both of them have the same rights. It's not always true that both of them have the same opportunities. That's, that, that's true, Lupita. And that, that's what my point is, that we shouldn't have these kinds of questions at job interviews. That's, that's the first start, I would say, just start there. 
uh, ask what, what did you study, uh, what's your qualification, and ask that to all the people, uh, despite their gender. And if a, a couple wants to have kids, it's both their responsibilities to have kids. And that's their personal thing, when to have kids, and that shouldn't, never, never <laughs> should uh, bias your decision of hiring that person. So yeah, same opportunities, guys, same opportunities. Okay, Leo, Leo, um, we went sidetracked. So if I may ask, uh, you've been to France, you've studied in Canada, and now you're here. Uh, have, you, have you seen uh, or have you ever faced in some kind of difficult situation uh, surrounding this topics, inequality, being an international student somewhere, maybe not with yourself, but have you seen any person near you going through that experience? Uh, let me think a bit. So, yeah, already uh, um, what I have noticed, uh, uh, yeah, wh what I have noticed is um, that for at least for, for, well, I speak out of personal experience and this is not a statistical nor scientific observation, so yeah. <laughs> But yeah, my colleague uh, women, they tend to be, it tends to be harder for them to go through like the applications to position and not because their file is bad, but because they tend to downside it, you know, I mean, to, to perceive it as uh, not as good as it is uh, actually. And, and then, yeah, th this is part of the factor, I think that also explains why the, so the ratio of uh, women to men is not already very good in, during a PhD, but it tends to get worse when you get to permanent position and even worse when you get to like, uh, like the second, like professor positions, you know, because you have assistant professor and then you have, you have, uh, you have professor positions. So yeah, that's, that's something I have, I have witnessed. And also, yeah, yeah. You, you, you recalled my, uh, I mean, the background and the different countries that I've been and yeah, th there's a significant difference between uh, America and uh, I mean, North America and Europe with regard to the take on equality because uh, North America is focused a lot on equal opportunity as a policy. Um, while in, yeah, in Europe, it's more, I mean, yeah, nothing is done in practice. But the, the underlying philosophy is more to reduce the inequality at, at first sight, at first, and not to give equal opportunity to people that have already uh, some some given some given background. So, uh, but now, so in Europe also, the, there are more and more equal opportunities policies, uh, even like for permanent positions in France, which is what I I know the I know best. Um, so it's starting to to take, but sometimes it. It also serves as an excuse not to tackle the problem to the root. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit undecided on what what to favor between the, the two approaches. I mean, they they look complementary, but yeah, uh, that's uh, sometimes you you make a big fuss of having equal opportunity stuff, and then you don't you don't get equal uh, ratios, and you don't understand why. And often it's uh, it's because of that the the inequalities are were already there. And you can you can counter them a bit, but not uh, not compensate for them. When you said um, uh, that there is um, equal opportunity policies, uh, could you give uh, an example about that? I mean, one of these equal opportunity policy. Yes. So um, so for permanent positions, uh, now it's become it, it has become almost commonplace to make explicit that. Uh, candidates from minorities uh, are encouraged and that the, the commission will tend to will try to take this into account and the same goes for gender i mean in, in the in the us and canada it's it's even more than that you also have like uh, an affirmative action policies which tend to like uh, favor uh, people from minorities uh, against i mean i don't i don't uh, it's not the right word but yeah which, which tend to counter the bias by favoring people uh, people who are, who are coming from, from minorities but yeah, in france it's more in france and belgium it's more like we will try to take into account and then the way it's taken into account it's not very clear to me but uh, it's at least now it's written before it was not written uh, 
for me, it's not really equal opportunity policy if you put uh, if you give an advantage to some uh, uh, to some population that for, that another. I mean, if you, I mean, the fact to uh, take this into account, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know, but the fact that you say, okay, we will push forward some people depending on some, um, I mean, arbitrary criterion, it's not for me. It doesn't sound like an equality equality of opportunity policy. It should be a little bit like the opposite. So yeah, that's why I drew I drew a difference between affirmative action, which is what we describe, yeah. and equal opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Those are two different take on the matter. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's already half, uh, already yes. half now we are talking. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, Lupita, do you, on a, just to end on a positive note, because we have some good arguments, necessary arguments, I would say, that uh, need to be heard and need to be spoken. Uh, Lupita, do you want to end it on a good note by asking the last question? Yes. Um, in your experience, what kind of strategies should a university take to increase awareness of these topics? So to increase awareness, I, I think these kind of events like uh, Equality Days are really uh, very welcome. I mean, of course, in theory, it should be Equality Days every day, right? Because uh, why, why just keep a week for that? But I see, I see the point of like having special events de dedicated, dedicated to that. But then, yeah, I'm not entirely sure to what extent raising awareness is enough or not, because yeah, behind you still have the, the structure of the society that is what it is. So, so, so yeah, but yeah, to, to raise awareness, yeah, you have organizing talks and also, I mean, pushing the science. I mean, for now, there is still a lot to, to find. I mean, for instance, we had this discussion that is as old as science between what is a social construct and what is a biological construct. And for now, for both sides, the empirical evidence is clearly lacking. And I think, I mean, having an informed opinion and this would also allow to raise awareness a lot. Although, of course, in politics, uh, scientific truth is not what is enough, what suffices to convince people of what is right or, or wrong. But yeah, I think there is clearly um, a lot of under like <clears throat> underfunding in this kind of sciences, especially the, so the social ones that really slows down the, the progress of uh, this kind of, uh, I mean, being able to raise awareness and then to actually address these problems. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for this very interesting conversation. Yes, thank it's you. It's always so a pleasure to, to, to discuss with you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we can continue this discussion afterwards as well, but we have to end here the podcast. But it was it was really nice, and thank you so much uh, for participating, Leo. It was lovely to have you. Thanks for having me. Yes. So, and thank you so much, Lupita and Rafael. And Lupita, what you said is really, uh, it's really true, and uh, it touched me. <laughs> It's true. And always, Rafael, um, it's good to have you in this podcast. And Thank you. Yeah, you ask good questions. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for watching uh, with us. We have one last episode tomorrow and then it's a wrap up. But mm -hmm. for today, it's a goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.